President Jimmy Carter had a plan for peace in the Middle East, and it's a major focus for President Obama. But as we saw with Carter, Obama might not have the best approach. Mike Evans is a Mideast analyst and author of Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left and World Chaos, a Carter-Obama plan that will not work. And actually, some of the foundations of Jimmy Carter's policies we're still dealing with today. First off, Mike, Jimmy Carter, a man of peace, he brought peace to the Middle East, didn't he? Anwar Sadat, Egypt and Israel aren't fighting. Shouldn't he be saluted? Sadat was assassinated because of Jimmy Carter. He funded the Muslim Brotherhood with $500 million, and they became known as the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And that was uh, Zawahiri. It was exactly. one of the founders of the Muslim Brotherhood. Jimmy Carter said, makes no bones about it. He is not pro-Israeli. He is pro-Palestinian. Right. He, he, Jimmy Carter has an ideological belief system that, that Obama has to understand because if he plays that game, we're going to have hell to pay for it. He deposed the Shah of Iran. He conspired through a Guadalupe summit to overthrow the Shah and the president of France told me he was a bastard of conscience. He showed up in Guadeloupe with the, with the French and the Germans and told us. And next thing you know, the Ayatollah Khomeini comes over from France, takes over, and nothing's been the same in that region. But how does that relate to Barack Obama? With terrorists and journalists. Peter Jennings was on the plane, Air France. How does it relate to Obama? Obama has an ideological worldview similar to Jimmy Carter. Talk to Iran. Talk to her enemies. Reason with these people. This is really, these are, see, Jimmy Carter re rejected preemption. He rejected the Nixon doctrine. By the way, he was elected on change and hope, and he ran against an unpopular president and an unpopular war. Watergate, Vietnam, Nixon. And the funding of what would now be known as Al-Qaeda really started during the Carter years. Listen, when, when Carter conspired to overthrow the Shah, and he succeeded, the Empress of Iran, Farah, told me, when he succeeded, Brezhnev said, if you do this, we will invade Afghanistan. They did. The invasion, the Shah told his wife, I fear that horror will come upon the world if he does this, because I fear that the Russians will invade Afghanistan, and Saddam Hussein will invade us, and the radical Islamics will become an epidemic and they did and you see a lot of similarities uh, between the two absolutely the Carter released his book on January 20th I released mine on January 20th my book is about 30 on Amazon is about 700 the reason why is these are facts I'm not saying stuff in here I'm making up Brian I, I met with more generals more intelligence leaders and you can imagine you asked me did I learn something I learned a ton of stuff that I did not know why did 911 happen how did it start what created this crisis? It was Jimmy Carter's liberal left policies. And you can even go back to South America with Nicaragua. The Somoza's out, Ortega's in, Ortega's still there, and communism that started to take root. When you see these people as human rights movements, you are feeding and fueling terror and you're creating the perfect storm. That's what Carter did then, and that's what he's doing now. And on some level, maybe they realize that, which is why you never saw Jimmy Carter uh, out on the trail with Barack Obama. People did not want to see that analogy. Michael Evans, it's your 34th book. Congratulations on it. It's an excellent one and very insightful. Jimmy Carter, the liberal left, and world chaos. Thanks so much for joining us, Mike. Thank you. Good to uh, see you again. Good luck. Mike Evans, welcome. Delighted to be with you. You've written a new book. Tell us about it. Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left and World Chaos. It's fundamentally a book on how Carter developed a, a belief system that tolerance would resolve the problems in the Middle East. And in your view, that, that view was misguided. Well, it created 911. It destabilized the Middle East. It caused the overthrow of the Shah of Iran. It caused the invasion of uh, Afghanistan by the Russians and the funding of the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt, which became known as Al Qaeda. On the other hand, Jimmy Carter was responsible for the peace deal between Israel and Egypt. He did win a Nobel Peace Prize. Well, really not. He, he was about as responsible as Arafat was responsible for the peace deal. Menachem Begin did the deal with the, the assistance of several other players. Carter took the credit for it and, of course, got the prize. You are also suggesting that current U.S. President Barack Obama is following in Carter's footsteps. Except on steroids. He it, sees the world exactly the same as Carter, except he's much cleverer than Carter. Isn't it a little too early to, to pass judgment uh, on, on, on the new president? 
Oh, not co quite mm -hmm. not. Uh, when you've got people demonstrating in the streets and dying for freedom and democracy, and you refuse to stand up for them and speak up for them and hold a regime accountable, you're basically sending a signal that you, you want to work with that regime. You think the U.S. should be doing much more in terms of supporting the opposition in Iran right now? Well, indeed. It's the center of gravity of world terror in, in Iran. Uh, when they're threatening to wipe the state of Israel off the map, and you're basically saying, I can reason with these people. They're experts on incitement. They've been doing it for 30 years, and they do have a lot of subcontractors like Hezbollah and Hamas. You can't talk with terrorists. But perhaps uh, President Obama realizes that too heavy an involvement by the U.S. at this time would only turn um, possible supporters of the opposition against them. Isn't that a possibility? I don't think so because the opposition doesn't have a voice. Their voice is ever present. They kill them and, uh, and beat them to death. It's impossible for the opposition to speak up. Someone has to do it for them. Why are all their signs that we're seeing in English? They're talking to America. They're crying out to America the same way they did, by the way, in, this, in the late 70s. Uh, when Carter double-crossed them, Obama's making a tragic mistake. He's basically telling a terror regime that's run by a theocracy and a thugocracy that they can be worked with. We can work with you. And he's ignoring the very people that can bring hope for the future of Iran. What will it take for the U.S. to get involved in your mind? I fear that it'll, it's going to probably take another terror attack. I hope not. I pray that it won't take that. But right now we're going down a slippery slope or we're redefining the terms of the debate. Israel now becomes the enemy. Israel becomes the problem. I heard him say in Cairo that the two biggest problems in the Middle East was Al-Qaeda and Israel. This is insane. It's completely absurd. Israel never was the problem in the Middle East. It actually was the solution. Harrell told me, as Harrell told me in 1979, September. The former, the former director of the Mossad. Yes, he told me that if America keeps developing a tolerance for terror, they will strike New York City and the tallest building. That was September 23rd, 1980. Interesting. Very interesting. Well, best of luck with your book, and uh, hope to have you back on IBA News. Thank you. All right, Mike Evans, can you hear us? I can. Fabulous, and welcome, welcome, welcome. I want you to know that I ignored my family yesterday to, to page back through your book because I, I, I wanted to write down a few questions that I had the first time I read it. This is fabulous. Jimmy Carter, The Liberal Left, and World Chaos. Why did you write this book? Well, I just finished the book. It, the book I finished the book just before the inauguration, obviously. Uh, it's just in the last 90 days I finished it. Why did you write it? Why did I write it? Because, because of the dilemma we're faced with. We have a Carter presidency that screwed up the Middle East beyond anybody's comprehension, and they still don't know what he did. And uh, we have another presidency that's coming in that has the same worldview, same ideological left worldview. I want to read to everybody the way you open your book. Actually, this is a few pages in, but you say... Um, the presidential election was a public sounding board for the much touted failures of the Republican Party. He ran against a disgraced president and his policies. He ran in the aftermath of an unpopular war on a platform of human rights, and he won. His theme was change, and it was not Obama. It was Jimmy Carter. That is the beginning of where you start to make comparisons. How do you see these men being so similar? Well... The first way they're similar is that Carter did not believe in preemption. Carter's ideological worldview was, he, he had called it human rights, but in essence he was embracing the, 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 the he was castigating the victims and embracing the perpetrators of the crimes. He took the idea, we do need to talk to people, and he redefined everything. Example, the Shah of Iran. He was an eight-president ally uh, of our country, and Carter completely destroyed him in favor of a holy cleric who he thought would be a Gandhi-like figure, Khomeini, uh, who burned Islam. Her head. Oh, it's, I mean, it's, it's totally true. true. It's, it's true. true. You're yeah. shaking and in, in, in <clears throat> agreement. Well, I guess. I, I, can I ask him? I don't sure. Know, go right ahead, Mike. Uh, go ahead. I was uh, making a comparison yesterday between this administration and uh, the Carter administration in terms of style. And 
what made me think about this was obama has created six new offices in the white house to deal with different issues he has now three different policy groups of economists he has so much information gathering going on and so much outreach to experts all over the place he sounds like jimmy carter who sat at his desk which was piled high as i recall from friends who worked there with information and never could make a decision because he never felt he had enough i mean it really is an interesting comparison i think do you think there's some truth in that well it really is listen i was advising mock and begging during that time when carter hated begging and by the way i asked mock and begging to give a position to a young depressed man whose brother was shot in the back benjamin Netanyahu, and he gave him his position and of course ben benjamin i believe today will become the prime minister for the second time but carter was so disengaged he was so dis disengaged and so obsessed he used to tell the cia let's deal with one problem at a time and they were saying iran is going to fall Khomeini's going to have a revolution. Let's deal with one problem at a time. Sorry, Mr. President, we have a big world out here. You can't deal with one problem at a time. Wanting to get so deep into the minutiae so of every issue. And in, yeah. in fact, and you've been speaking to financial columnist uh, Liz Peake, and in fact, Mike, you write in your book that Jimmy Carter would go over bills previous to his being president, but he would go over bills as governor. Uh, saying not even the issue of the bills but he took issue with the punctuation he was so fastidious and detail oriented oh dear you you couldn't even use the tennis court at the white house without jimmy carter approving it this guy micromanaged everything but the dilemma that most people don't understand about jimmy carter they say what happened with 911 why did we get into this mess but what they don't understand this man believed he actually believed in these radical organizations as he does today and he was funding Khomeini out of Paris through the CIA he was supporting this operation through a man called Yazdi he was getting him into power working with the president of France working with the German Chancellor and the British he was organizing orchestrating a revolution that he thought was going to transform the world in Iran it did it did indeed